<laughs> hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and well, this is gonna be a pretty interesting video today. So today was supposed to be my first day off in like months and the initial part of the day I was supposed to just go off-roading and then the last part of the day I was supposed to just uh, relax but now I'm making this video because I had a little bit of a mishap with the Raptor taking it off-road and this is how it always goes. When I'm like doing a filmed review, nothing crazy happens but the second that I don't decide to bring out a camera, the craziest stuff always happens. And so in the first part of the video, I'm just gonna tell the story of what happened and then I do have a little bit of footage and some photos as well. So you guys can see some of the carnage. And then we will do a quick walk around to the Raptor and uh, see how bad it actually is. Let's get into it. Oh, also, I gotta, I gotta keep pumping my uh, carbine course because now I've got a Raptor to fix. So, uh, link to my carbine course in the description down below. This is the uh, way for you to save time, money on a car, and then also the GoFundMe for Ben Hardy so that I can buy new Raptor parts. Maybe this video should instead be titled Ben Hardy Story Time. So, anyways, I need to kind of like set the stage for this. So first off, this was not intended to be like a whole YouTube video thing. I was just going out with some friends to basically have a little bit of time off. I haven't taken like any time off in the last few months. And so I was just gonna go do a little bit of off-roading and then come back home and hopefully, you know, maybe do a little bit of editing, but just rest and relax. And that is not what happened whatsoever. So first off, the lineup of cars that was going kind of told me that the trails weren't gonna be all that difficult because we had a few Tacomas, a Jeep Wrangler, and then a Ford F-350 FX4 with a long bed, okay? So I'm thinking, okay, there's gonna be a diesel truck here with a long bed. These trails are not, like, it's just gonna be some dirt trails, maybe some twists and turns and all that. And well, obviously that is not what happened uh, whatsoever. So the initial trails were actually super easy. Uh, there were some hills that went up to like 25, 26 degrees, but if you have all terrain tires and an engine under the hood, then you are gonna be able to make it up that type of hill, no problem whatsoever. And so that was the initial part. Again, it was really easy. And we got some cool photos of like the Raptor flexing on one of the things. And I'll kind of throw this in after this little section, uh, but we have like the Raptor flexing and then we have like the Jeep Wrangler that has 37s and a lift. And then it had Falcon shocks as well, flexing on a rock. And so we just got some cool like glamor shots. And there was this really cool like dark cave that we also drove through as well. And so again, it was just kind of like this like lighthearted off-roading that wasn't difficult whatsoever, but it was just kind of fun and messing around. And again, that's what I assumed this trip would be the whole time. Now, we moved from that section to another section in the desert, and to get to this section, we went through some, you know, minor, minor crawling, and when I say minor crawling, it was mostly going slow because there was really sharp sharp rocks and we didn't want to puncture tires, to some higher speed trails that you could do some fun Baja driving, but it was kind of hard with the Raptor because the trails were a little bit on the narrow side of things, and so something like a mid-sized truck or like a Wrangler was like perfect on those trails, but the Raptor was taking up like the entire trail, and so so I couldn't go all that fast throughout most of it, but it was still quite a bit of fun. And then we get from that to a kind of like open section with some dirt bike jumps. And uh, you guys know what happens whenever you see a jump with the Raptor. So of course we jumped it a couple times and this is when I think the first bit of damage happened. I don't exactly know, uh, but I took the Raptor off the jump the first time. You guys will see with the video at the end of this clip, uh, you know, at probably like 30 something miles an hour, roughly. And then the second time it was closer to like 40 miles an hour. The first time don't even like barely get off the ground. And then the second time catch a little bit of air, but then I plowed through a bunch of like up whoops basically and this you can see this like the raptor took it so well from a suspension standpoint but i think it might have been enough like compression and rattling that it could have you know slightly knocked the skid place loose but at the same time nothing else on that truck was loose uh, and so i i don't know exactly um, but it was it was still fun and that was kind of like the next little section right there and then after that we basically just drove to uh the rock crawling section and this is where all the crazy stuff happened
Okay, so we get to the rock crawling section and most of it actually looked pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, what I did with the Raptor just to make things easy and not try to flex on anyone or you know try to like show how macho I am is I just threw the truck in four wheel low locked the rear ends and basically just, you know, crawled up the stuff to make it so that I wasn't, you know, I, trying to like struggle too much. I, I think it's so funny that people will try to get up obstacles with the least amount of help possible because they're like trying to show how good of a driver they are. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be about that. I'm like, I just want to go up as easy as possible. So if a vehicle has four wheel low, I'm going to use it. If a vehicle has front or rear lockers or both, I'm going to use them. If it has a stabilizer bar, sway bar disconnect, I'm going to use it. I have no shame with that. And also trail control. I use that quite a bit. Uh, the Raptor's trail control. I kind of figured out the best way to use the trail control, by the way. So if you're crawling up something, the best way to crawl up it, or actually crawling down as well, it, it depends on how steep, but if it's like an actual like rock obstacle where you're doing some Jeep Wrangler type stuff, like what I did today, uh, what I'd recommend is set the trail cruise control to like one mile an hour. I know it's really slow, but if you're going to be doing some like, you know, stop and start rock crawling anyways, then you want to be going that slow. And what you do is you don't touch the gas at all because again, it's once you let off the brake, then it's moving one mile an hour. And so then you basically just modulate by using the brake and then it does this really nice crawling motion. And I experimented with a bunch of different things today and that's what I found to be the best. But this is obviously where the incident happened. So we do quite a bit of like, you know, minor crawling where again, as long as you had a decent amount of ground clearance and a two speeds transfer case, you'd be able to get through it just fine. Even without that, you could just do it in four wheel high and you'd be completely fine. You don't even need four wheel, didn't even need four wheel low for most of it. And struggling to talk here. Um, and so we climb up all these steep hills and then we get to this one section that's really tight with a bunch of trees. And this is probably where most of the damage happened on the wrap and on the fender flares because I scraped against so many trees. But again, that's why I wrap all my vehicles is so I can do off-road stuff like this and not care whatsoever. Because like when I hear like the, you know, just like the going across the truck, it's like, cool, it's scratching the vinyl. Who cares, right? So uh, wrap your vehicles. If you take them off-road, it'll decrease your stress levels by a massive amount. But anyways, we get up this really like long hill trek and just to give you guys an idea of like how crazy this hill is, most people were only going up this hill with like razors and dirt bikes, which uh, says something about it. The grade at the top of the first little hill was probably about 20, I think it got up to like 28 degrees or something like that. So it's a steep hill, but again, as long as you had aggressive all-terrain tires and four-wheel drive and you just modulated the throttle a decent amount, then you'd get up. Even There was like a lot of little slippery rocks on it. They were kind of like shooting out, I noticed with some of the other trucks. And so again, if, as long as you just kind of slowly crawl up, it'd be fine and pretty easy situation overall. And then this is where things kind of get crazy. So. We're at the top of this mountain and there's two different like peaks on either side of the mountain and I drive up the one peak and there's nothing really to see there. And then the owner of the F-350 tries to drive up the other peak and he's like, this is some crazy rock crawling stuff. I am not going to attempt this. And so of course, me being in a Raptor with 37s, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta try this at least. I'm like, so far the off-roading has been, you know, fun, but nothing's been super challenging. I'm like, I want a little bit of a challenge today. So I obviously get around, take the Raptor up and we and we get past like the first little humps and I'm like, oh, these are actually pretty big. I'm like, oh, is this it? And then we get to like the actual like big rock obstacle and I'm like, this is way bigger than what I thought it was gonna be. It was pretty crazy. And so we get up to it and I basically drive right up to the rock obstacle and I just kind of look at everything and I had decks there spotting me and I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to take this really slow. And because of how long the Raptor is, basically I had a rock wall on one side of me and on the other side, there was a ledge. And so I had to like very slowly maneuver kind of around and then up this rock. And then in terms of the grade, it was about 22, 23 degrees before like popping up onto the rock. So I'm already on a pretty steep incline. And then on top of that, trying to pop on a rock and go around a corner, like it's, it was a pretty difficult transition. But you know, once I just got around and took it slow, we, the Raptor went up perfectly fine and nothing went wrong. But then we get to the top of the mountain and we have to turn around and this is where the whole fender flare got ripped off. So we get to the top of the mountain and I start kind of like cruising along the top and we're like, okay, we're gonna go here and then we're gonna kind of turn around here. And I get off this little rock ledge and I'm like, this isn't, it looks like the index told me the side steps look like they're gonna like hit and everything and it looks like potentially it'd be like a pretty hard impact. And I'm like, let's just call it back up and I'll figure out another way to like back out. And so then I start backing up and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden I just hear this huge rip 
And then I'm like, what just happened? And then we go outside and the entire fender flare had gotten ripped off because the mud flap got sucked into the tire again. Stupid thing, I should have just taken the mud flaps off before doing the crawling, but again, I wasn't expecting to do any crazy off-roading. I was expecting to just go on a leisurely off-road drive, not do a like Jeep Wrangler Rubicon rated trail with my Raptor. And so yeah, it got ripped off. And then we you know, basically just placed it uh, back on, well, not me, Dex did, and so got the fender flare, popped back on, just took off the mud flap, and then I ended up backing out and then going down the obstacle. And honestly, going down the obstacle, I took it slow, but it, it, once I kind of knew the obstacle, it wasn't as difficult as going up because a lot of that's kind of like a mental game. And just so you guys know, the Wrangler Rubicon with 37s, and I don't know how lifted it was, but it looked like it was at least like a four inch, maybe even like a five inch lift. Again, 37s, like five inch lift plus with Falcon shocks, struggled to get up that thing that I went up with the Raptor. So it's not like I'm going over stuff that's not super difficult. Like this was a really difficult trail, even for a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with front and rear lockers and a sway bar disconnect. And so the fact the Raptor made it through and if I had taken off my mud flaps, wouldn't have scraped whatsoever and wouldn't have had the fender flare pull off was amazing. But um, obviously an interesting situation to happen over the weekend. Let's do our quick walk around on the truck to do the uh, quote unquote damage assessment, I suppose. So first off, the skid plate that we talked about earlier, uh, here you go. So you guys can see it's misaligned just a little bit. Now there's tons of damage here on the wrap. Kind of like I said, some of this happened uh, after I got it wrapped because it was really cold outside and I didn't let the wrap cure. So it's kind of like bubbling up, but here's the damage here on the front on the wrap, super minor stuff. Um, but this is the uh, side where the fender flare got ripped off. So you can see here, don't have some clips here on the front end, so it's not fully like locked in. So I'm gonna have to take this to the Ford dealership in Provo, of course, because it's a service department that I always use, and just get some new clips so that the fender flare can be fully clipped in and all that stuff. But I mean, the truck's still drivable as it stands. And well, I'm gonna have to figure out the mud flap situation with this fender flare, because you can see it is completely ripped there because uh, basically what happened, and we kind of talked about this earlier, is again, the mud flap got caught on the tire. I should have just taken the mud flaps off before I did the uh, crawling. But like I said, I just didn't even think about it. I didn't think we were gonna do crawling that crazy <laughs> today. So anyways, got caught in the tire and then just ripped the whole thing down. But I think it's just like, a miracle that nothing happened to the fender itself that the fender flare just ripped clean off all the clips came off and most of the clips are still fully intact like it was just like a it was like just perfectly ripping a band-aid off we'll take a look at this mud flap so i'm gonna have to uh, order out a new one most likely because you can see it's completely torn through this just shows how stupid i was with today's off-roading adventure because if we look at one of the mud flaps that's still attached Look at this, three attachment points. All it takes is a, a screwdriver and a little bit of elbow grease and I could have taken all the mud flaps off and this wouldn't have been a, a problem whatsoever. So definitely use your air. So you can see a chunk taken out of the wrap and the wheel itself. I'm not sure exactly when this happened. It probably happened at some point during the crawling. So that's pretty much gonna sum things up for today's video. And I guess the uh, lesson of the day is take your mud flaps off if you're going to attempt to crawl up a trail that is meant for Wranglers only, basically. I mean, it's just uh, astounding to me. I mean, it's, it's one of the dumber things that I've done, but at the same time, like, put yourself in my shoes. Think like, 
you basically get invited out to go on an off-road adventure and you get told that it's going to be a group of Tacomas that are, some of them are pretty close to stock. And then there's also gonna be a, well, the Suburban didn't end up coming. It ended up getting swapped out with an F350 long bed. So I'm like, oh, well, the trails couldn't be that difficult if an F350 long bed is going to come along. So it is what it is. Anyways, I will see all of you guys in the next video.